He places his palms flat to feel the cool press of tiles beneath his skin. Mommy collapses against the wall across from him and works her jaw in a way that reveals the dimple in her left cheek. It's weird to see her good church shoes in the shower. Luca touches the cut on his lip. The blood has dried there, but he scratches it with his teeth and it opens again. He understands that, were this a dream, he would not taste blood. At length, Mommy stands. Stay here, she instructs him in a whisper. Don't move until I come back for you. Don't make a sound, you understand? Luca lunges for her hand. Mommy, don't go. Mijo, I will be right back, okay? You stay here. Mommy pries Luca's finger from her hand. Don't move, she says again. Good boy. Luca finds it easy to obey his mother's directive, not so much because he's an obedient child, but because he doesn't want to see. His whole family out there, in Abuela's backyard. Today is Saturday, April 7th, his cousin Jennifer Skinsianera, her 15th birthday party. She's wearing a long white dress. Her father and mother are there. Tio Alex and Tia Yemi and Jennifer's younger brother, Adrián, who, because he already turned nine, likes to say he's a year older than Luca, even though they're really only four months apart. Before Luca had to pee, he and Adrián had been kicking the balón around with their other primos. The mothers had been sitting around the table at the patio, their iced palomas sweating on their napkins. The last time they were all together at Abuela's house, Jennifer had accidentally walked in on Luca in the bathroom, and Luca was so mortified that today he made Mami come with him and stand guard outside the door. Abuela didn't like it. She told Mami she was coddling him, that a boy his age should be able to go to the bathroom by himself. But Luca is an only child, so he gets away with things other kids don't. In any case, Luca is alone in the bathroom now, and he tries not to think it, but the thought swarms up unbidden. Those irritable words Mami and Abuela exchanged were perhaps the very last ones between them, ever. Luca had approached the table wriggling, whispered into Mami's ear, and Abuela, seeing this, had shaken her head, wagged an admonishing finger at them both, passed her remarks. She had a way of smiling when she criticized, but Mami was always on Luca's side. She rolled her eyes and pushed her chair back from the table anyway, ignoring her mother's disapproval. When was that? Ten minutes ago? Two hours? Luca feels unmoored from the boundaries of time that have always existed. Outside the window, he hears Mami's tentative footsteps the soft scuff of her shoe through the remnants of something broken. A solitary gasp, too windy to be called a sob. Then a quickening of sound as she crosses the patio with purpose, depresses the keys on her phone. When she speaks, her voice has a stretched quality that Luca has never heard before, high and tight in the back of her throat. Send help. Chapter 2 By the time Mami returns to pull Luca from the shower, he's curled into a tight ball and rocking himself. She tells him to stand, but he shakes his head and rolls himself up even tighter, his body flapping with panicked reluctance. As long as he stays here in the shower with his face lowered into the dark angles of his elbows, as long as he doesn't look Mami in the face, he can put off knowing what he already knows. He can prolong the moment of irrational hope that maybe some sliver of yesterday's world is still intact. It might be better for him to go and look, to see the brilliant splatters of color on Jennifer's white dress, to see Adrienne's eyes open to the sky, to see Abuela's gray hair matted with stuff that should never exist outside the neat encasement of a skull. 